But it is a ZVT habitation station. This map pretty good for Terran drops, pretty good for Mutalisks. It's gonna be a good one. Currently the score is 0-1 or 1-0, depending on which uh, clan you're looking at. And it is 0-1 uh, here for Demos. So Ear, looking to tie it up. I'll see if he can go ahead and do so. Alright guys, we are in the game. And up here, on the top left side of the map, Habitation Station. Playing for his clan that goes by the name of Demos Esports Community. The Yellow Zerg player. We have Fugu. And up here, in the top right side, looking to tie things up for his clan going by the name of Overdose. The Blue Terran player. It's Ear. Alrighty. So, no 10 pulls from Fugu. There's nothing crazy going on. Uh, we could have a Roach Rush later on. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. Looks like Ear's gonna go for the wall off. Perfectly fine and safe versus a Zerg. As, as a Terran player, you obviously want to wall off because if you don't, then the Speedling's gonna run by in the mid game and you're just gonna lose your entire mineral line. And then you can't make any units. So, it's definitely a bad thing for Terran players. So Fugu gonna do a 12 drone scout out in the middle of the map here, which I always like it when uh, Zerg players do something like this. They're able to get in the base, see the gas timing, see the barracks timing, see if it's proxy 2 racks or what have you. And in this case, he's gonna see it's command center first. Here, this is very, very greedy. Especially on a map where it's so good for mutas. If Fugu sees this and says, okay, I'm gonna play two base muta, it's gonna be really hard if Ear doesn't scout it. His marines are going to be delayed with the delayed barracks and everything, and Fugu is actually going to go down a 15 pool route instead of 15 hatch. So he's most likely looking to be aggressive here with that spawning pool. I can't see what else it would possibly be for. And command center coming down for gear now, this SCV being harassed, but unfortunately the drone will not be able to kill that SCV before the SCV kills the drone that uh, was sent down there to go ahead and defend that guy. But now Ear sees this, and how is Ear going to respond here? He's got one barracks on the way. If he builds a second barracks, I think he'd be in a great spot. But if he keeps this one, I think it could be a little bit close. If Fugu decides to go for aggression. Now, there's no gas. So maybe this is just the safer play if it's anything like Reapers or if it's anything like a two racks as well. Maybe Fugu could be expecting a two racks. But he's seen the command center first for a while now. And looks like Ear is going to be able to deny the hatchery here for Fugu just by a little bit. Really nice SCV control so far from here. And Ear is going to go that double barracks uh, follow up. Ooh, loses the SCV. But that's not too big of a deal. He was able to delay that hatchery for a while. But look at Fugu, man. He shows no fear. He's going right for that third hatchery. Going to get his natural down immediately. And not going to build any gas. Now, I like what Fugu is doing here. He's making six lings to see if he can't get any kind of damage done. Because any damage is really good for Fugu. It's, it's just, you know, a little bit extra. I knew we normally wouldn't be able to do. So those first six lings moving across the map now. Third hatchery is nearing halfway to completion. And that second hatchery has been started now. And there goes the gas for Fugu. And again, these lings are going to be slow for a while. And if Ear goes for the fast factory, like most Terran players, he may be able to exploit that a little bit. But yeah, he's going to go for one gas now on 20 supply, which is fine. And the first six lings now do move into the natural. And Ear going to lift that depot immediately. Knows one Marine cannot take that on. Now, Ear can lift this orbital command if he feels like it's a danger. Three Marines should be able to take on six uh, Zerglings as long as you do not get surrounded. Uh, SCV production. Actually, a couple of our SCVs being pulled here just to make sure Ear actually wins the fight, and I like that. It's just a little bit of an early transfer. As long as he doesn't lose any, I think he's okay. Yeah, this is just an early, earlier transfer, but no, may lose two here, no. Good control by Ear, able to pull those two on the front lines back, and these three Marines should be able to go ahead and stave off these lings until more Marines are able to arrive. And a second gas coming down now for Ear, so an earlier factory going to be coming down. A supply drop there from Ear a little bit, as he did get, did get a little bit of supply block. Now, the problem I have with this is if Fugu was going to be aggressive, and this supply depot went down, that's basically two supply depots. So that would really hurt Ear. But again, as we, as we can see as observers, there's no aggression coming out, which is already in fine and dandy for here. You needs to make sure he gets us at that SCV out of his hot group. Yep, there you go. Bunker, Supply Depot, looks like you're going to go for a wall off. Not before he goes for a little bit of regression and will get an overload here for his troubles. 
no supply block Fugu. Uh, but that's that's fine. I don't I don't think Fugu really cares too much. And he's making six more lings here is Fugu just to make sure he holds off this aggression. And this is a pretty sizable marine force. It's only seven marines, but at this stage, seven marines versus six lings. Those six lings are never going to win, even if they get a full surround on those marines. Factory coming down now for here. Looks like the reactor on that barracks. So looking to go for those standard Hellions, and even more Marines being added, making grand, making it a grand total of nine. These Marines are pretty formidable, but I think Fugu's got enough to hold this, especially with this Queen here, if this Queen is able to tank shots. And there's a lot of Lings being forced out here from Fugu, so I think once Fugu makes all these Lings, he knows he's got to make something happen, but a really nice surround there by Fugu, but these Lings down here are actually not doing anything. They could have completely trapped those Marines. Looks like all the Marines going to die, though, so Fugu not taking any damage, just taking a couple of Ling losses. But he forced a ton of units out, did eager. That's 24 Zerglings on the map. And I think Fuku's just going to go right across the map saying, I got to do something. I made all these lings, and I don't want them to just be sitting back on my base doing nothing. He's going to go right across the map. The bunker is not filled, so Ear is going to have to go ahead and get those Marines started ASAP. Two Hellions about halfway completed, and speed is now done for Fugu. So he can easily ambush these Hellions if the Hellions decide to go out in the middle of the map. And Ear is unaware of them. Third command center coming down now for Ear, so he's looking in a nice spot so far. If he loses these Hellions, I'm definitely going to start favoring Fugu in a big way. But if again, if Ear is able to keep those guys alive, I think it should be okay. And Fugu may go for a little bit of, bit of aggression here, and I think he may. He's going to send one more Ling up there just to check how many Marines are in that bunker. He should know it's only one, despite the amount of uh, damage that was done on that Ling, and as well as the number of... Uh, gunshots he heard coming from that bunker. So double evolution chamber coming now for Fugu. And Fugu's on a grand total of 46 drones, looking really nice. There goes those four lings, and Fugu may try to run up here and do a run by. The supply depot is down, but no, it looks like it looks to corner these Hellions. I'd love him a lot more to go light up in the main base, but here, not going to go ahead and fall for that, going to raise that depot. And these Hellions going to give chase now, see if they can't catch these guys. So the Hellions are going to regroup with six more of them and try to catch these lings once again. Maybe the ling hunters. Now, these three Marines, if they hop in the bunker, Ear should be completely fine. Two Widow Mines on the way, three more Barracks on the way for Ear now as well. No fourth base so far from Fugu, and I don't know what Fugu has seen. Fugu has not seen the third Command Center quite yet, so that's definitely going to be detrimental to him for now, because if he doesn't spot that, it's going to be huge. But, but look at Fugu, man, out in the middle of the map. These Hellions going to get a few Ling kills already. And these Lings, man, these Lings have to be really careful. Fourteen drones on the way for Fugu. Knows he has to up that drone count. Knows he's probably spent quite a bit here on the Lings. Six Hellions now, and there's only a handful of Lings, and Fugu may be looking for a counterattack, but I don't think he is. And these Hellions can't actually pressure this Queen. All the Lings that were back at home to defend the four Fugu have been killed by Ear. And these Hellions of Ear are doing a really nice job of controlling space around the Zerg base. But unfortunately, these Lings going to come in from the back and may kill every single Hellion, which I will not be favoring Ear's position if that happens. These two are just staring each other down, saying, I'm going to wait for you to make the next move. Whatever makes the next move. No, Ear's going to go right towards them. No, feeling confident enough in his micro, he can roast up a lot of those Ling, and a lot of them actually being roasted. Decent micro so far from here, but this round, oh, this is so close. I think Ear's going to be able to kill every single Ling there. Yeah, it gets out with four Hellions. Really nice trades. We look at the resources lost 1,350 for Fugu, 700 for Ear, so it's definitely favoring Ear here just a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of to be expected this early game uh, as a Terran player. You know, you have these Hellions, they are really efficient versus Lings, and you've got the Spire coming down for Fugu, which means his lair is done. You've got uh, the, ba the Baneling Speed or Centrifugal Hooks upgrade coming in. Um, again, Baneling Speed. And we have two more barracks coming down for Ear, and Ear going to opt to take that gold base as his third. So he's feeling really comf comfortable and confident against this Zerg player. And I think he feels he can hold on to that. Decent cream spread from Fugu. I'd like it to see I'd like to see it a little bit better, but hey, you know, it's it's I'm just nitpicking at this point, which I shouldn't do because I'm only platinum, but hey, you know it is what it is. I'd like to see his creep spread be a little bit better. His creep spread is not bad, but I definitely think it could be a lot better. Macro hatch coming down for Fugu's spire nearing completion. Ear doesn't have oh no, never mind. I was about to say Ear doesn't have any turrets, but he does. He has one in each mineral line. And 2-2 two, two on the way for Ear 1-1, one, one, just about to finish for Fugu. So he's going to have to make sure to start that 2-2 two, two right away as soon as those upgrades finish to keep up with Ear. I don't know. He's losing a little bit of time, and Ear is gaining a lot of time in that upgrade advantage. So any time a bio Terran has 2-2 two, two versus the 1-1 one, one Lings, the 2-2 two, two Marines are going to have way more efficient trades versus the 1-1 one, one Lings. Um, otherwise, if it was 2-2, two, two, they would have... 
a little bit less trading power. And looks like you're gonna load up one wood on mine. No, never mind. Actually, didn't mean to load up that one wood on mine. But all these lanes gonna make a push here to make something happen. Take the watchtower. And I think Ear's gonna look to move out. Yeah, he's gonna look to move out around 13:30. This push could be a little bit earlier. But I think with the little bit of damage he took and a little bit of micro he was uh, doing in the early game, it may have cost him a couple of units. Scan coming down. Ear gonna stim a few marines or take out these creep tumors. And there's a few banelings here for Fugu. And Central Field of Hooks is done as well. So Ear's gonna have to be really careful about his engagement. Position. Looks like he may try to take the position up the ramp, which, which he is by the looks of things. And if he plants these two widow mines on this ramp, things can get really dangerous really fast for Fungu. But Fungu's Muta is going to launch a counterattack here on the third base of gear. It looks like a widow mine went off there, and here we go. The engagement going to come down here. One mainly being targeted, and I don't know if he's got enough. The widow mine doing a decent amount of damage, and actually, one widow mine. Uh, doing a lot of damage to those banelings, but I think Ear's, Ear's position is going to be broken here, yes, he's going to be completely overwhelmed, unfortunately, targeting down the Metamax with the Mutas should be Fugu, and yes, he's starting to do that, more Widowmines being planted, getting a decent amount of shots off, but it looks like Ear's just going to be absolutely overrun, but again, Fugu would have to make sure he just streams out units, while Ear is going to have to make sure he, he's able to defend this counterattack right now. So again, if Fugu is able to stream units and overwhelm Ear, it could be good game right here. And the Banelings going to go right into the mineral line here. Could do a lot of damage. Yes, you're not going to micro those guys at all. Going to lose every single SCB in the mineral line. That was a grand total of 16 workers there. The Muta is actually being misrallied here running into that missile turret. But I don't think those Mutas really care. And Ling's just being thrown away dilly-dally, dilly-dally all day for food. Because he doesn't really care at this point. They're just kind of being misrallied. Just most like these Mutas. And, uh, yeah. A very, very sloppy control there from Fugu. He was just misrallying a lot of his units, so he lost a ton. Uh, they were just kind of running by this command center over here. The Lings and Mutas were kind of running into these two missile turrets. Well, the one missile turret now, but he was just kind of, you know, taking a lot of free shots there. And here's on 3-3, three, three, at least working on it. And 1-1 one, one is still the only upgrades that Fugu has. He's really slipping on those upgrades. 2-2 two, two is here. So if it's just Lings versus Marines, and if it's Lings and Mutas versus these 2-2 two, two Marines, those Marines are going to win out every single time. You're securing a fourth base, and he's on equal bases with the Zerg. Fugu, man, you got to make sure you keep up in that base count versus a Terran player, because if you get behind, Terran is going to start really taking advantage of that. And I think... Um, I don't know how, how much longer Fugu can really go without upgrades. I mean, 3-3's three, three on the way for here already, and if it's 1-1 one, one versus 3-3, three, three, that's a scary sight. And Zbuta's coming in here to the third base, killing one turret, but not accomplishing too much more. And a big giant Ling counterattack coming into this fourth base here. The planetary not quite finished, but here may have to cancel this planetary just before. And it's just, Bailing's gonna crash in here, actually gonna kill the planetary outright. So that was decent there for Fugu, but I don't know if he can afford that, as again, he's, he's, he's now one base ahead, but he was one base down. And this is a huge army from here, especially with that upgrade advantage, makes it even more formidable. 79 Marines, and these Marines are going to start stimming forward, picks off one Queen, and they decide to give up on the rest of their journey. And look at the worker counts, 58 to 76, so Fugu's in a really nice drone count. These Marines just kind of picking away at these circles, but here we go. The engagement's going to come in here for Fugu. You're going to back up. There's only two Widow Mines here, though. You're going to have to make sure he splits like an absolute god. And, oh, those Bane getting some decent shots off the gear with some really nice splits there. Able to keep a lot of those Marines alive for now. And the 3-3 three, three is about three-fourths of the way complete. And I feel like once that completes, it's going to be really hard, but here we go. Here comes another engagement. Is Fugu going to get the Bane hits? No, he's going to pull back instead in Ear Man. He's, he's making these engagements look pretty good for himself. Units loss is still favoring Ear. And, uh, yeah, man, he's he's able to keep a lot of these Marines alive. His splitting's been good for now. His upgrades are way ahead. Three, once 3-3 three, three completes, it's going to be so hard for Fugu to hold, as 3-3 three, three Marines are no joke, man. Only 1-1 one, one on those lanes again. And these Mutas have one attack, but really... Fugu does not seem to be a proponent of upgrades. Maybe this is just nerves getting to him. And then a lot of Marines coming up here to this fourth base. If uh, Ear gets this base, it's going to be huge. But you're going to go ahead and decide to push out here anyway, knowing that the Mutas are way over his side of the map, and the Lings were forced to go over there to deal with that. And Ear really able to pre-split here this fight, and he's going to be able to take a really nice engagement, I think. A lot of aliens being used there, but the Mutas coming back in from the back and able to kill a lot of these marines but more and more reinforcements showing up if your splits well he should be okay he splits really well there and there's a few marines left these medevacs just kind of chilling out these mutas can definitely have a heyday on those guys but more and more marines being rallied across the map 13 at a time 
and it uh, looks like these medevacs are going to be able to be saved by these four marines here. 3-3 three, three is done now for here, and they are no joke, man, as I, as I stated earlier. No joke at all. 1-1 one, one still for Fugu. Fugu, man, you need to get those upgrades. I know it's a little bit too late now, but still, man, you should have had those upgrades a long time ago. And this is going to be really unfortunate, because look, these lanes do nothing to these marines. These marines kill most of them before they get it close. And more Balin's trying to be morphed now, but your splits have been really good this game. He just has to make sure he continues to split like that. I guess that wasn't a too bad of a trade. A lot of medevacs going down, though. These two Widowmines are really adding a lot of splash, though. 12 kills on one and 13 on another, so those Widowmines definitely paying for themselves. You're going to pre-split here, but I think there's too many bandings here for Ear to be able to overcome with just pure splits. But more reinforcements coming in from the back. Looks like Ear is going to be able to take that fight, and Fugu being forced back again. But 50 Zerglings on the way for Fugu, man, he is not giving up until he loses every single Zergling. His bank is completely run dry. These two Widowmines are going to do a little bit more damage, but not, not as much as Ear would like. Ear just rallying, 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 rallying all day to the middle of the map. But Ear doesn't have very many medevacs left. He's only got this one to his name right now. And he's, he's looking to make some more. But these 3-3 three, three Marines versus these 1-1 one, one Lings are going to do nothing. These 1-1 one, one Lings are going to do nothing. Yes, the 3-3 the three, three Marines are going to do a ton of damage. 2-2 two, two just now starting for Fugu. He needed that, those upgrades a long time ago. And again, this is really, really scary for Fugu. These Lings are going to be doing nothing to these Marines. They're 3-3. Three, three. Look at this. Even this handful of Lings is having a hard time dealing with this amount of Marines. And that's a really scary thought. But here, loading up a Medevac there. And that Medevac's got 1 HP, man. 1 little rock comes kicking up. Just kicked up by a Widowmine burrowing or something. going to kill that Medevac. That's really unfortunate. That's... Not a very good spot, but again, 3-3 done for Ear, and he's going to be able to take really efficient fights. Nice surround there so far by Fugu, but those Widowmines doing a ton of damage, killing every single Baneling that was in that army. Fugu's only going to really have the Banelings he can make right now, because Lings are being flooded, and looks like you're going to be able to catch all of those from the reinforcements. Here comes Ear, and here comes the engagement. Nice Widowmine hit there for Ear. It looks like Ear may be able to break Fugu right here, there's no more Banelings. Here, man, you need to go right now. You should know he has no more Banelings, and his only Mutas and Lings which these 3-3 three, three Marines are going to be able to chew through them like they are nothing, but Ear looks like he's running out of money right now. He's only got 200 minerals left in the bank, has 4,000 gas, but again, Terran doesn't really spend gas too quickly, and these Banelings are being remorphed here, and I think Ear sees them, but I don't know if he can actually do anything about them. And Fulu's 2-2, man, is nearing completion here pretty quickly, but there's still one set of upgrade lead for Ear. Ear going to step back towards these Widow Mines. A lot of friendly fire being done there, and a lot of, a lot of Banelings surviving. Looks like a decent amount of Banelings still surviving, about seven of those, but Ear's going to push forward, make sure his splits are good. If his splits are good, he's going to be able to take this fight. A couple more Widowmines still here, but a really big Baneling hit there for Fugu, and Fugu may be able to push this back. And he's been mining off of four bases, but Ear has just now re has now secured his fourth base, so he's equal on base is Fugu, and Ear is looking at a really nice spot. He's got three factories churning away, three, uh, a lot of barracks churning away, 13 Marines at a time. Looks like this army's finally getting cleaned up by here, uh, here by Fugu and Ear, man. He's just constantly rallying units. He needs to make sure he regroups a big enough army to take a fight. This is something Terrans do a lot of the time. They get really tunnel vision. They feel like they can win the game outright. And they keep pushing, 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 pushing. And before you know it, the Zerg is taking more efficient trades than the Terran. And then all of a sudden, the Terran's in a really, really hard spot because the Zerg cleans up their entire army. And then the Zerg uh, is just able to overwhelm the Terran reinforcements. So... Ear is doing what I want him to do, which is regrouping his forces, making sure he gets a decent enough army to go. And it's buying Fugu a little bit of time here. Getting up to the hive is Fugu, but I don't know if Ear is able to break through here and Ultras are never able to come out, I think Ear is going to be okay. We need a counterattack coming in for Fugu, and this is the real harassment he's been looking for. Lots of SCV stacked up on this one mineral patch, and looks like Ear going to go forward knowing where the mutas are, and I think Ear is going to be able to break Fugu here if he splits just right. He's able to take this engagement just right, because it's 2-2 two, two to 3-3. Three, three. Again, those 3-3 three, three upgrades, no joke, man. Lots of Banelings being morphed in here for Fugu. The question is, is Ear going to be able to break this army and get to those morphing Banelings? I'm not sure. These Mutas still flying around over here near the, near the gold base of the Zerg. And looks like these Marines being used really well. These Widowmines not doing anything, just kind of sitting there, but good splits, really nice splits from Ear over here on the right side. Uh, these Banelings going to do a decent amount. More Banelings rolling in, though. Looks like this entire force of Ear is going to get cleaned up, and Fugu's starting to hold these attacks. 
He's starting to hold them, yes, just by the skin of his teeth, but with his mute account, he's able to fight his marines straight up. Uh, unfortunately, though, he can't start bleeding mutas like this. He's only on 1-0. These marines, again, 3-3, three, three, gonna shred through those mutas, but this is buying Fulu more time. Yes, he's barely holding off these attacks, but he's holding them nonetheless. He's able to survive. He's able to, you know, just keep on chugging away, and he needs a fifth base. He knows it. He's got a drone down here, but he's only got 300 minerals. If he builds this hatchery, he's going to be out of money pretty much here for the next few minutes. Looks like he's not going to choose to do that. Going to choose to morph in nothing but banelings. And ear man, he's been bleeding forces here and there. When we look at the units lost, have 34,000 for food, 27,000 for ear. So still favoring ear. Worker counts 42 to 69. And a fifth base being established here for ear, but being a counterattack here by Mutus. It's actually the command center from his main base, so ear knows he needs a new base. He needs it right now. And there's a decent amount of banelings here, 16 banelings with two more on the way, making that a grand total of 18. So, uh, you're just gonna have to be really careful on the way he engages here. This fourth base is completely exposed, but no medevacs here for ear. You need those medevacs, man. Every single stim is gonna hurt you so much here, ear. You really need those medevacs, and those banelings doing a decent job. Those widow mines not doing the job that they were paid for. Those widow mines are completely fired, and these mutas coming up from the back and you know, everything in ear. He's just gonna leave the game, not gonna GG an ear, man. That that Terran parade push syndrome, man. He felt like he had it. He kept going, 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 pushing, 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 pushing. And Fugu was able to start taking more efficient trades, more efficient trades, and was able to just start cleaning up the armies one by one by one. In ear was starting to run out of steam, run out of money. He was trying to secure bases as rapidly as rapidly as he could, but he just wasn't able to secure the bases necessary quick enough. <sighs> mm, yeah, uh, very aggressive by uh, the Terran. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's one thing Terrans do a lot, I've noticed, in, in DBZ. They feel like they can break the Zerg, and they just keep throwing units at them, small bits and pieces of an army, and it just keeps getting cleaned up, and the Zerg army keeps amassing, and then they just are able to overwhelm the Terran, so... It was interesting watching Fugu play because his uh, skill level is like uh, lopsided across the board. I felt like his macro was very, very, very good, but his creep spread was atrocious. And his creep spread was left something to be desired there, honestly. At um, the end, he had no, he had literally zero creep tumors. Yeah, he had no creep spread at all. And his queens were at full energy, but his macro was like amazing. It's aside yeah, his from his upgrades. Oh so, yeah, his upgrade. His upgrades were, he got 2 2 later on, uh, but his, um, he just knew when to produce units and he knew when to produce drones. I felt like he was very, very, very good with that. It's just his yeah. creep spread and upgrades were, were way yeah, off. His, his creeps definitely leave something to, to be desired. There. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No question about that. But good play by him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good play. Definitely able to just hold off the constant attacks by ear and eventually able to mass up enough army. I think and, uh, Fugu had very good decision making. Yes, yes, very good decision making. Knowing, okay, I've held off this attack. I think my ground army is good enough. I'm going to go counterattack with the mutas, and he was able to get a decent amount of damage done, and then able to fly in from the back with those mutas whenever uh, Ear was getting a little bit too complacent. He was able to fly in with those mutas and do a lot of damage. Interesting. Well, I gotta wait on the map. Uh, there's been no map. There's been some... I thought I, we would have seen more, more aggression out of uh, out of Fugu also with the pool first in response to the to the yeah, season yeah, first. Did, but I like I like his conservative play, just making six lings, just to make sure. You know, if, if he gets any damage done, it's a little bit extra, and it and it gets him a little bit, a little bit more, in the build order opening game. It gets him a little bit more in that. Um, yeah, he freaked the Terran out enough to pull like six SCBs yeah. or something. Like, was it five, like five or six? Yeah, five SCBs. But that that really isn't the biggest deal, I think, because it kind of acts as an early transfer, as the command center was just finished. So it was kind of like a transfer. Yes, they lost a little bit of mining time, but... Overgrowth. All right. Favorite map. So Zapper is going to be the player. Oh, you thought... Of, okay. Fugu says that his reasoning behind the uh, 
pull first is because he thought that uh, it might have been a proxy by the Terran player. Yeah, I kind of figured that may have factored into his thought process as well. So he could have... Yeah, okay. Alright. Uh, okay, like I understand. 